What we're going to be going over here is reporting and calculating earnings per share here in common stock where we have a preferred stock dividend and we're also going to have some extraordinary gains and losses here to deal with and we're going to it's going to be for a simple capital structure here where there's no dilutive securities. Okay so what we're going to have to do is compute and report the earnings per share here for common stock along with any extraordinary gains and losses here and how they would uh, affect here our earnings per share here and how this would be uh, reported here in the financial statements. So for our general uh, uh, formula or equation here for earnings per share here on common stock. So we start out with our net income here. We subtract out any preferred stock dividends. We divide that by the weighted average number of shares outstanding. So each of these items here have to, we have to determine what they are. So uh, what we're going to be looking at here for our net uh, net income avail and our this net income less our preferred stock dividend that's going to be the net income that's available to the common stock shareholders and that's going to include some extraordinary gains and losses and how we'd have to break those out here for our determining our earnings per share here and we also have to look at the preferred stock dividend what is included in that preferred stock dividend and then we'd also have to calculate the weighted average number of shares outstanding so those are the things we have to look at okay so let's go and look at our example here Okay, let's assume we had income for the year here of $5 million here, and that's before it, some an extraordinary gain here of 700000 Now these are net attacks here, the gain, and then we have a loss here from discontinued operations here of 200000 Again, that's net attack. So that's what we're starting with here. Net income of $5 million before this gain here, this extraordinary gain, and this loss here from discontinued operations. And also, we're going to have this preferred stock dividend and for the current year and we have two years in arrears that haven't been paid here for the preferred stock dividend. Preferred stock we just had 50,000 shares, $100 par, 8% dividend per year so that equates to $400,000. Okay, so this is our mission here is to compute the earnings per share here for common stock for the current year and as it should be reported to the stockholders on the financial statements. So the first thing we have to do is we have to lay out this income data here. And what our goal is here is we have to get down to the net income available to the common stock shareholders, determine what that is, and then everything... Um, has to be reported on a per share basis here for our gains and losses here and and what we we reporting here is income so first thing we have to start with is our income before these extraordinary items and uh, this is known here we're that's going to be five million dollars that we're given here now we have to subtract out the preferred stock dividends and that's for the current year old uh, current year here even if they're not paid for the current year and uh, they still have to be included here or uh, deducted here from the income before the extraordinary items here. And we don't include anything in arrears here. Anything in arrears wouldn't be included. It's only for that current year here. So uh, subtracting that uh, current year's preferred stock dividend 400000 from the from our starting income here uh, of $5 million. So we're going to come down to, and this is what we would detail here, common stock income before any extraordinary items here. And that's going to give us $4,600,000. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to deduct, deduct or subtract out here to loss for from discontinued operations. We'd have that stated here. That was $200,000. Subtracting that here from our common stock here uh, before extraordinary items, four million six hundred thousand. Our so then we would state here income before those extra uh, before the extraordinary gain here uh, would be four four million four hundred thousand dollars. Now we have to add back add into uh, this extraordinary gain here. So we'd be adding to the income before this extraordinary gain, the extraordinary gain here of 700000 So adding that to the $4,400,000, we're going to come up with a nut, net income available to common stock shareholders here, $5,100,000. And then we're, we're given here the weighted average number of shares outstanding. We're given that to be 969,500 shares. Okay, so what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to determine each of these items here on a per share basis. But one other thing I want to look at here, uh, say for example, in this case we were given the income before any extraordinary items here of five million dollars but say we weren't given that in we had a problem here where we're given the net income available to common stock shareholders here that five million one hundred thousand and we have we'd have to work our way back here 
to determine the income before any extraordinary items as it should be reported. And this is just a task here that we'd have to do. So in the case you were given a problem like that, uh, you get the net income available to the common stock shareholders. You start with that here and all you'd have to do is reverse whatever ad uh, deductions and um, uh, increases and in any which you added here. Uh, in, let's just look up here. He added the extraordinary gain here to determine the income before the work, work our example back here to determine the income before any extraordinary gain or items here. What you'd have to do is you'd have to subtract out that gain here and, uh, that you'd have and you'd be subtracting that here from the income available to common stock shareholders and then you'd be adding back in your, your duck deductions here for the, uh, the loss here and also you'd be adding back any preferred stock dividends here only to get this income before extraordinary items if you had to report uh, you'd have to report that so that's just how you just arithmetic here looking at how you'd be reversing your um, additions and subtractions here uh, where you'd have to determine your income before extraordinary items given the net in uh, given the net income here uh, available to common stock shareholders okay so we've made our calculations here it would have to be laid out in this fashion in your financial statements here or, or notes to your financial statements and then the next thing is we have to de determine everything on a prefer prefer per share basis here so what we would do here, we'd start, I got them not, uh, lettered here, A, B, C, and D here. So uh, common, we'd start with our common stock income before any extraordinary items. And each of these uh, per share basis has to be divided here by the weighted average shares outstanding that were given here. So what uh, per share basis here, uh, before any extraordinary items, we'd have that $4,600,000 uh, here divided by the weighted average number of shares here. That's going to give us $4.70. 74 cents per share and that's before the extraordinary items and then for our loss for operations again we had that two hundred thousand dollar loss divide that by the weighted number of shares here you're going to get 21 cents per share here for the loss here for discontinued operations and those would have to be shown here in your financial statements how you came derive those here and then the extraordinary gain would have to be broken out here as well that was that uh, 700,000 here divided by the weighted average shares outstanding here for 72 cents and then the net income available to common stock shareholders that 5,100,000 here divide that by the weighted average number of shares you're going to come up with five dollars and 25 cents per share here a net income here for common stock shareholders so this is how we may we'd have to break these things out based on the facts that were given here for those extraordinary gains and losses and also the and, and what I do want to note here when you're dealing with this preferred stock dividends here you have to subtract you start out with the income before the preferred stock dividends and then you have to strip strip tracked out the preferred stock dividends here to come up with the common stock income before any extraordinary item so that preferred stock dividend has to come out here not to confuse things here okay so what we've done here is we've made our earnings per share calculations here for our losses our extraordinary gains and then we had to uh, determine that uh, per share uh, basis here uh, before any extraordinary gains and then we had to determine what the per share uh, earnings per share here was for the net income available to common stock shareholders okay so the next thing we do here we just take all these earnings per share here as they would be reported on our financial statement and we just set up a note to our financial statements or some section in our financial statement where we have the earnings per share here so we'd have the common stock income before any extraordinary items here four dollars and seventy four cents as we shown up here and then we would have a loss from discontinued operations here for 21 cents as we calculated and then we'd have the income uh, for the extraordinary gain here of 72 cents per share here and then we'd have the net income available to common stock shareholders just the sum total of those amount 474 subtract out 21 cents per share add back 72 cents per share here you're going to come up with five dollars and 25 cents here earnings per share as it should be reported in the financial statements and then the other thing here uh, net of taxes we're showing everything everything has to be netted of taxes here we didn't have any tax calculations we were just given the numbers here where they were net of taxes so that's how we'd be reporting it okay 
There's one other thing that we, if you're not familiar with it, let's go look at how we determine the weighted average number of shares outstanding. And that was that $969,500 amount. Okay, so let's go and look at that. Okay, here is to determine the weight, weighted average number of shares outstanding here. So what you would do here, in our example here, you have to look at the dates you have well you're going to have these share transactions for the dates we're going to look at some stock issued stock dividend and stock split and then we would have the dates when each one of these share transactions taken place and then we have to share changes we have to determine uh, the share changes or the, what increases and decreases in our shares here and then based on that we can determine our shares outstanding here and then we have to restate anything prior to any of our stock dividends or stock splits they have to be restated here and we'll look at that here and then we have to determine the fraction a year here that those shares are outstanding and that goes back to our dates that we have here based on our share transactions and what we would do is again I'm multiplying everything out here shares outstanding the restated amounts here for fraction of years we're going to get the weighted shares we sum those up to get the weighted average number of shares outstanding okay so let's start with uh, let's just say we had a beginning balance here of 240,000 shares then we issued some stock here one month later February 1st of 60,000 shares so we shares outstanding increases to 300,000 then we have a 20% stock dividend so 20% of the 300,000 here on uh, 20 that's 60,000 here on March 1st here so we increased from 300,000 to 360,000 and then we acquired some treasury stock here bought back 50,000 shares here so it brings us down to a 310,000 here for the shares outstanding then we have this stock split here three for one so we had uh, May 1st here 310,000 outstanding stock split here comes June 1st so three times that brings us up to 930,000 shares outstanding here and then we reissued some treasury stock here on 10-1 for 30,000 shares reissued so that would bring us up to 960,000 shares outstanding so the other other thing we have to determine here we have to restate any of our stock dividends and stock splits so what we would do here for our 20% stock dividend here what for everything above that any date it occurred here on March 1st so our beginning balance plus any our uh, anything for February 1st here up to March 1st has to be restated so that's simply 20 a 20 percent increase in each of those are 1.2 times those uh, shares outstanding prior to the stock dividend then the other thing is we had that stock split here on June 1st here so what we have to do is restate everything above that so that would be every anything um, uh, anything in advance of the June 1st date so it would be that one our beginning balance in one one through May here so there again restated because we had a three percent split or three times or a split three for one we'd have to increase the shares outstanding by three times here so we do that for uh, our shares outstanding here in one one two one here three one here and then we had jump two months here to five one here for three so anything above uh, Ju uh, June 1st here has to be restored restated or increased by the frac by a quantity of three here okay so then what we have here then we have to determine the fraction a year here that each of these a share trend uh, sh shares were outstanding and that's simply just going back to our dates here and just looking here let's look at three one to five one so you can see here that is two months here so you take two twelve two two twelfths of the year here so that would be two twelfths here times the shares outstanding here on March 1st and okay so we've you do that here for each one of these transactions so then just looking at our weighted average shares all you do is take your shares outstanding times whatever you have to restate it at so let's look at the first period here so 1.2 here or 1 1.2 times our shares outstanding for that stock dividend also you have to take three times that here for the stock split so 1.2 times three times times the shares outstanding and then what fraction of the year well that was from uh, January 1st here to February 1st so that's 1 12th of the year so that's going to give us our weighted shares uh, here uh, of 72,000 now you proceed on down here and do that for each of the fraction of years here that those shares are outstanding based on whatever restated amount you have that gives you your weighted shares here again a times B times C so 
determine your weighted average shares outstanding here. For each of those periods here, those share transaction dates here, just take whatever you calculate for weighted shares, sum them up here, and your, the total amount here for this year here is 969,500 shares here. That's the weighted average number of shares outstanding. Okay, so that takes care of our problem here where we had to do some reporting here and calculating the earnings per share in our common stock where we had some preferred stock dividends and we had to deal with these extraordinary gains and losses and how to report them. But uh, then we finally went through here to determine the weighted average number of shares outstanding for our problem here. Okay, so that sums up our problem and we're, we're done for now.